Hey kids, Grandpa here. Well, as you can see, I am someplace different. Um, <laughs> I am in a garage in Lancaster, Ohio, that uh, had been very poorly converted into a rental and uh, needs a lot of cleanup and paint and spiffing up, but that's fine. I can do that with time. Uh, it is warm and dry and out of the weather and a whole lot nicer than my cabin in Alaska, even with the bad spackle job here. Um, it, it'll be just fine. I'll fix it up and make it just, I'll make it just fine for the time being. It's not going to be long. I'll be here, but for the time being. So <clears throat> warm and dry, got a hot shower and flush toilets and a kitchen to use and, uh, so life is uh, pretty good. This is actually the, my uh, ex-wife Johanna's garage um, that was converted into a rental, and um, it'll be just fine for me. So, um, I wanted to touch base with everybody. There's been a lot of questions, a lot of speculation on the comments about this big change for me. And let me start out by telling you guys, um, <clears throat> I got a, a, an email actually from uh, Riley over at Selling La Vagabond one of my subscribers, viewers, friends, uh, told him that I, you know, changed my plans and was down in the dumps and maybe uh, if he would send me a nice email, and he did. And it speaks volumes about the kind of person that Riley and Elena are on Selling La Vagabond. Um, really nice folks to take of their time and send me a very nice email. And so I wanted to thank Riley for that. But, you know, like he was saying, this is just a short tack to find a fresher breeze. And that's exactly the way I'm kind of looking at this. Um, we will be sailing again. In fact, I've got a very good plan to get me in a very nice sailboat and be sailing fairly soon. So let me explain that to you. But let me preface this by telling you that um, sailing going forward is going to include my family. Um, I no longer am too much worried about sailing around the world. Uh, as much as I am about sailing and being able to share my uh, my passion with my family, my sons and my grandsons and my granddaughter and whatever other grand whatever's come may be. So right now, Grandpa is enjoying the hell out of living here in Ohio and being around all my family. Um, it beats the hell out of my little dry, crappy cabin in Alaska by myself. And as you can see, <laughs> somebody else is enjoying it tremendously as well. She's having a good time, aren't you? So here's the thing, and, and, and here's the plan. Um, but, but before I get to the plan, I wanted to try to touch base with everybody about what was the, uh, what was the mitigating factor? What was the the moment of inspiration, what was the the impetus that made me change my mind and direction on what I'm doing? And and really it was, you know, like the movie, The Perfect Storm, it was a perfect storm of a number of different things. So let me go into that very briefly here. First of all, <clears throat> I'm fishing on Steve's boat in Coin Jock, North Carolina, catching some catfish in the intercoastal. Well, at least I was catching any, Steve didn't catch any, but uh, and I'm thinking to myself, here I am fishing with this guy that I'm just now getting to know and seemed like a nice enough fella, but still, you know, obviously not the right person for me to be around on a permanent basis, but still a nice enough fella. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I could be teaching my grandkids to fish instead of being on this boat fishing with him. So that was kind of the first thing. Then as Steve was frying up the catfish that I had just caught, I got an Instagram from my youngest son and it was a video from of my granddaughter two-year-old granddaughter, Elspeth, saying, I love you, Grandpa, and I miss you, and I wish you were here. Kind of tore at the old Grandpa's heartstrings, you know? Um, and, and my son was saying that she wasn't feeling very well, that they had some concerns that Elspeth wasn't, uh, wasn't feeling good. So I had some concerns about that. And then another thing happened. Um, so that was two. And then the third thing that happened was my, well, I'll tell you the whole story. Very briefly, my father, when he retired, um, I was selling real estate in New York at the time. I had a real estate brokerage office on Long Island. And my father had a dream when he retired that he and I were going to buy properties, buy up homes, fix them up, renovate them, 
and and uh, use them as rentals, rent rent them out. You know, look for two family houses, three family houses, uh, good good rental properties that we could buy, fix up, and then rent out and and make a profit with that. And uh, you know, he's a civil engineer, and I was a real estate agent. He was in the process of getting his real estate license, and uh, it looked like that was going to be a good lucrative thing for us to do. Um, however, in September, October of that year, dad was actually in real estate school trying to get his real estate license because he wanted to get licensed as well. And while he was doing that, uh, it was hunting season uh, here in Ohio. So I came out to the family farm uh, from New York where I was living and um, went deer hunting. Well, while I was down here on the farm deer hunting, I got a call from my mom telling me that my dad had a stroke, massive stroke. And so my dad and I never did buy up houses, fix them up, rent them out. Um, but surprisingly, my oldest son happened to comment to me that he would like to try to buy houses here in Lancaster, Ohio, or in this area, and fix them up and convert them to rentals. It was a good, sound business plan back when my father thought of it, and it was still a good, sound business plan today for my son. So so that was another thing. That was the, the kind of the third, you know, log on the fire, if you will. Uh, and then, you know, my ex-wife here, she's having some troubles. Her husband is, is very poorly, uh, in, in very poor shape and she needs help. And so there was that. Steve and I weren't working out, um, fundamentally different values. Um, just not a good match for me. Not the kind of, uh. I mean, Steve's okay. He's a, guy, he's, he's a fine guy, um, but he's not the kind of person that I would want to go sailing around the world with. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. So, so I, those things, and, and I was unhappy with the boats I was looking at. That wasn't working out. I was really living a, a little too close to the edge. Um, and so I decided it would behoove me to uh, go a different direction. And so I have returned here to Ohio to help out my family, be around my grandkids, having fun doing that. Uh, but, you know, I, I've kind of, you know, everyone's thinking, well, you know, you gave up on your plans and dreams to go sailing. Well, yes and no. Like Riley said, this is just taking a small tack, well, maybe a pretty big tack, uh, to find a fresher breeze. And so let me uh, tell you what the plan is. As you guys know, I am a licensed real estate broker up in the state of Alaska. That's what I did for a living. In 2015, I flew down to Florida, bought a car down there, and opened a real estate office in Florida. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, while in that process, my wife announced that she wanted a divorce, and so that all got you know demolished down in Florida uh, as a result of that. However, while even even with all of that turmoil and strife and sadness and panic and what have you. Um, I was highly successful in Florida. I sold a couple of properties. I made pretty good income, um, sufficiently so that, uh, you know, I, I'm interested in going back there and working. Problem was that my ex-wife cleaned out our accounts and, and, and took the only vehicle we had and left me with no ability to work or do anything and kind of left me broke. My son came down from Ohio, brought me here to this same property I'm on now. Uh, and I stayed in a guest bedroom in my wife's house and I got to work and, you know, really focused and started kicking butt and I made pretty good money. In fact, 60 days later, I was able to go out and pay cash for my Ford excursion and um, <clears throat> got back on my feet pretty quickly, which is exactly what I'm doing again now. Two years later, um, that's OK. So what I'm going to do, and this is just the kind of crazy batshit stuff that grandpa does, apparently, I'm going to continue selling real estate up in Alaska. Even though I am here, uh, I can still successfully and profitably be a real estate agent in Alaska. Now, how is it you say can that happen? Well, I'm going to use this little bracelet that my grandson gave me yesterday. You see, it's got two different colors. In real estate, there's two sides to a transaction. There is the people selling the property and there's the people buying the property. You can be, as a real estate agent in this industry, you can be a seller's agent or you can be a buyer's agent. I am a seller's agent. So what that means is, is I don't 
put people in my car and drive them around and play tour guide and show them houses. That's what a buyer's agent does. What I do is I identify people trying to sell homes and I take care of all of the back office operations, the marketing, the pictures, the videos, the descriptions. And, you know, I take care of all of the sales aspects and the marketing, coordinating showings for the buying agents. Uh, but as a general rule, and, and it's been my experience, and I've been doing this for 30 some years. Um, you know, it, it's a it's the much more profitable side of real estate and the least expensive side of real estate because I'm not wasting gas. Dry. You know, up in Alaska, I could go through an entire tank full of fuel driving people around showing a property and not get anything from it because then they decide they didn't want to buy there or whatever. Um, but as a listing agent, um, I don't run into nearly that uh, exposure. And so it, it's more profitable for me. So, so that said, I can still continue to be a listing agent in Alaska from Ohio. Uh, I have someone up there that can run around and, and put signs up and take pictures for me and that kind of stuff. Um, in Florida, I am only 18 hours away from Florida here. I can jump in my truck and be there tomorrow morning. If I need to go meet somebody, if I need to go put a sign up, if I need to pick up keys or something or take care of a property, I can jump in my truck and drive down there and, and do that. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go down to Florida once a week. I'm sorry, once a month. One week out of the month, I'm going to go down to Florida uh, for the, for the you know, on the ground stuff that needs to be done. The rest of the stuff I can do from up here in, in Ohio. I can do all the internet stuff. I can do all the marketing and, and, and take care of all of that. I can go down there, shoot my pictures, shoot my videos and stuff of the listings. I can come back up here and put the whole thing together. So that's the plan. I'm going to focus on trying to sell real estate in Florida, but I'm also going to continue selling real estate in Alaska. And I'm going to do that from here in Ohio. Uh, and that's going to give me a really good opportunity to earn. So um, I prepared a little thing I, I wanted to show you guys. Just, just, you know, for your information, this is a spreadsheet that I did. Um, you know, and, and, you know, give you a bit more information that we ever really wanted, but these are my costs involved in getting my Florida real estate license going. I have to take a, I have to fill out an application with the state. I have to take a test. I got to take a real estate class, an online real estate class. I got to rejoin the MLS. I got to get my Florida business license and I got to go through the fingerprint process where they fingerprint you and do an FBI investigation, all that stuff again. I just did that in 2015, but we're going to do it all over again. Okay, over here is where it gets interesting. Um, <clears throat> in 2016, in the Florida Keys, they sold 2,082 properties. In the Matsu Borough of Alaska, Alaska doesn't have counties, they have boroughs, um, but they sold 582 homes sold in Alaska. Broken down by the values, whether it's under $100,000 property, 100 to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to $400,000 properties, what have you. Okay, this is how many sold in each of those areas in that price range. So, if you just to keep this really simple, if you look at properties worth $500,000 or more, because that's where things kind of petered out in Alaska. There was only five, three here, one here, and one here. There was only five properties last year that sold up in the area that I worked in Alaska that sold for more than $500,000. Conversely, in the Florida Keys, all of these properties are worth more. In fact, if you go down here, five properties sold over $500,000 in Alaska, of 1,104 properties sold over $500,000 in the Florida Keys. Whether I'm selling property in Alaska, I work on a 5% com or 6% commission. If I sell properties in Florida, I still work on a 6% commission. So it is much more profitable for me because the property values are so much higher in Florida than they are in Alaska. Um, if I sell a $100,000 house in Alaska, I make there's a total commission of $6,000. If I sell a $100,000 house in Florida, it's still $6,000. The difference is that $100,000 house in, um, in, in Alaska is a $450,000 house in Florida. That simple. So if I make $100,000 as a real estate agent in Alaska, 
I should make $480,000 as a real estate agent in Florida just because of the difference in the property values. So it's a much more lucrative market. Surprisingly, both markets have about the same number of real estate agents. Population-wise, they're almost identical. Let me show you. The uh, population of Alaska and the Matsu Borough, 88,995. The population of Florida Keys, 73,000. So the number of people living in the area is about the same. Now, in the Florida Keys, there's only about 100 square miles of populated ground in Monroe County, but there's a total of 983 square miles in Monroe County. Now, that includes the uh the the marsh the swamp down there that includes the the uh, um everglades national park so it's really not fair to say well there's 983 acres because you know 883 of it is marshland that you can't build on and there's nothing out there but egrets and alligators so conversely in alaska in the matsu borough it was 25,258 square miles of land um, giving you a population density of 3.6 people per square eight per square mile. In Florida, there's 74 people per square mile, but that's based on the 983, not the 100. So, <clears throat> so surprisingly, Florida has population-wise actually a little less population than the Matsu Borough, and so it has just about the same number of real estate agents per number of homes being sold. The only difference is. The property values are 480,000 versus 100,000. And Florida has 1,100 homes that sold last year, over $500,000. And Alaska had, or Florida and Alaska only had five. So a lot more lucrative for me, a lot better earning opportunity for a grandpa uh, and, and a market that I've already worked in before. I've already had an office down there. I know exactly what I need to do. I've been successful before. I can be successful again. Hey, last time I went down there, I didn't get down there until end of February. So it was end of March by the time I got my licensing and stuff all done down there. And it was, uh, so I worked March. Everything was great. I worked April. Everything was great. And it was the end of April that my wife decided to separate. So uh, I, you know, May and June were an absolute disaster down there with her. Uh, didn't get very much of anything done. Then I came back up here to Ohio and was here for a couple months. And then I went back up to Alaska. So I was actually only in Florida in 2015 and working, um, well, a total of six months, but actually only working maybe a total of two. And in that period, I made $80,000 down there. I sold the house in Key West, Florida. Still amazing to me to this very day. I sold the house in Key West, Florida on a 60 by 100 piece of land. It was an older home that had been very lovingly restored. It had been it had been stripped down, um, cleaned up, refurbished. Everything fixed on it. Uh, new windows. Uh, the doors were restored, but new windows, nice little new windows, done tastefully to the style of the home. Uh, all new bathrooms put in, really high end marble and all kinds of stuff. But it didn't have a kitchen. No kitchen at all. There was a room for a kitchen, very small room, actually smaller than the area I'm sitting in now for a kitchen, but the guy actually never installed the kitchen. Sold that house for a million three. Million three for a house without a kitchen. I made a $49,000 commission because I was a listing agent and another agent was the selling agent. I made a $49,000 commission on one sale of a house without a kitchen. Crazy, crazy. Um, so if I did that, then I can do that again. And that's, that's exactly what my plan is. Only now I'll be a lot more calm and focused. I won't be dealing with the divorce and all that kind of nonsense. Um, I will be doing it from Ohio instead of being down there. So I probably won't be as successful in that regard as what I had been in the past. Uh, but you know, there's a big margin of error to deal with. So I think it'll be very profitable for me. And, uh, I think I'll, I'll do very well down there. And so that's the plan. So what's interesting from your perspective is, well, what does all this have to do with sailing? Well, if I'm selling real estate down to Florida Keys and I'm going to be down there for one week out of each month, I need a place to stay. 
Initially, I'm going to have to motel it because I don't have the resources yet. But after I get a couple, if I sell another one of those million three homes and I have a $49,000 commission, guess what I'm going to do with that money? That's right. I'm going to buy a sailboat. My plan would be to buy a sailboat and keep it at a marina there in the Florida Keys. Now, I could buy a house down there. Um, not for 49,000, I couldn't, but I could buy a house down there and, but you know, by between buying the house and paying the house off and paying the taxes, uh, that'd be expensive. I can buy a nice sailboat, keep it down there and pay the Marina five, $600 a month <clears throat> and have a really nice place to stay while I'm down there. Now I logistically have issues about moving the boat back up to someplace during hurricane season, but you know, I'm only 300 miles from Annapolis, Maryland here. So uh, during the summertime, I can move the boat up to Annapolis and, and just motel down there when I got to be down there in the summertime. And then after cane season, move the boat back down there and have my floating condo. So so that's the plan. Although now I'll have the boat down there and available for me and my family. We'll be able to get down there and go sailing and scuba diving and fishing and all those things that I want to do. Uh, but I can also use it as a floating office for me while I'm selling real estate down there. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to take a very big tack and catch a fresh breeze. We're going to get ourselves in a much stronger financial situation. And I am, you know, restoring my relationship with my family and getting all that improved again. And so that is, uh, that's going to be good. That's going to be great. So that's what we're doing. But anyhow, if you like this kind of crazy ass stuff, what else would you expect from Grapple? I mean, really, what else would you expect from me? Some kind of crazy ass stuff. If you like this kind of crazy ass stuff, please do like and subscribe. Um, if you want, check out our Patreon page and become a patron so you get some of the inside stuff. Uh, there'll be a lot more content coming in the future. And that's all, folks. So we'll have another video out again soon. I may do a live stream on Sunday. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, get on the comments down below. More for you later, kids. And please do a good job of taking care of each other. I would appreciate it. Thanks, kids. Bye.